So I think we're still good morning. Um, my name is Brian Call from uh, IT Sligo. And um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I lecture in uh, Lean Six Sigma and uh, ran a MOOC with my colleague uh, John Donovan for the last four or five years. We've had about uh, 5,000 students from 50 countries uh, take that via Moodle. So loads of data there if anyone wants to uh, work on it. I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, I'm going to talk about my, um, my, my real students that are, are paying. So I start out with a question. And uh, my question really was, um, does moving from a final invigilated exam to an online open book exam result in an increase in student grades? So what happened was I have a, a Six Sigma course to start out with 25 students, 50% was continuous assessment, 50% was a final invigilated exam. And that now has moved to about 180 students. Uh, so there's issues with even getting 180 students into an exam hall, there's issues with, uh, quite selfishly, uh, correcting 180 students. So uh, I was interested in Sinead's presentation earlier from NUIG about the single version of the truth, and I would be very much into uh, you know, what I call data-driven decisions versus <coughs> drama-driven decisions. So the drama-driven decision was, no, 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 no way, there'll be issues with academic integrity, people will be cheating, and so on. So basically, I took, uh, um, I took 50% uh, was continuous assessment, five quizzes during the semester, and 50% in an online exam. So I've moved that now to keep the same continuous assessment, and 50% is a online exam over two hours with 40 questions, but it's everyone takes the exam at the same time, not at the same place, but they take it at the same time. And there's some things in Moodle that I've set up whereby the, the questions, if you're familiar with Moodle, are sequential rather than freeform, so they must answer a question before they move on to the next question. So, as I said, uh, the drama-driven decision was no way, uh, but here's the data, right? So on the left, uh, as you move from left to right, you're seeing their average final overall mark in blue. Now these are mature students, they're all working in industry and the multinationals, so they're, they're, they're quite a motivated class, they're all paying, so they're not, they're not a traditional, what we call a CAO student. So you can see the average mark uh, for the final overall mark in, going back to 2011, which was the 50-50, final invigilated exam, 75, 73, 74, and I did this retrospectively, so I wasn't really sure what I was going to see, uh, moving right across. And actually, um, the correlation between the final overall mark and the final exam mark uh, was, was, uh, was quite close, till you moved to uh, last year, September, December 2015. And actually what happened um, was that the final exam mark, which is now a online exam, at the, same, at the same time, but not at the same place, actually dropped. So the data actually showed that for them it was more challenging. Now the formats changed, so there's some confounding variables in there. But essentially, uh, you could see that their final, final exam mark dropped from an average of 71.2 to 73.6. And then I looked and said, um, well, actually, what's happening kind of on a, on a box plot basis? And you could see that uh, the median mark uh, dropped again to 71.72 versus it was kind of around the 75% mark um, and this was the, the final overall mark. And the other thing is there was very few outliers. So what was interesting there was that, you know, students weren't, uh, were, were very familiar with the exam format as they went through the semester. Uh, but uh, so when they came to the final exam, that exam form was still the same as opposed to a final exam. Is that three minutes or three seconds? <laughs> 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 or time up. Okay, um, and then the final exam mark actually dropped as well. So it dropped uh, from, it started off at around 80 median down to uh, 65. So moving in the right direction, again, with very few outliers. So in summary, um, what, what I thought the opportunities would be that you, you now could use some of this data. Very hard to get though. Could you, could you actually look and see, you know, is there grade inflation going on? Is there certain modules and certain programs which will be marked too easy, marked too hard? Um, you know, are we giving too many first class honours, too many second class honours, um, or too many passes? Uh, I think the challenges are that it's really clunky to do this in Moodle. You really have to work to get the data out, and uh, you need some um, academic uh, buy-in, obviously, if we're going to be looking at modules and marks across programmes. Okay, thank you very much.